Episode 109, Standing in the Way. The guests of the charity event were categorized into separate industries, and everyone in the entertainment industry were seated in the second row. Eric's seat was the first one on the left. Next to him sat a pianist, followed by Emma. Out of all those sitting near him, Emma was the closest woman. She looked past the pianist to Eric's seat. He hadn't arrived yet. She glanced to her right and realized that it was Charlotte Garcia's seat. From the moment Lucas Perez and Charlotte Garcia entered the venue, they had no idea that Emma would be sitting next to Charlotte. Lucas's immediate reaction was to suggest that Charlotte swap seats with him so he could keep Emma away from her. However, if they swapped seats, Charlotte would end up sitting beside Father Five. He had previously told her that Emma was joining Creative Century. If that came up in conversation between them, he would find out that Lucas had intentionally prevented Emma from joining H-World. However, that was the lesser of two evils in his eyes, so he still decided to swap seats with her. Normally, he wouldn't have felt guilty after what he'd done, as it was already in the past. However, this is Emma, he thought. Lucas sneaked a glance at her, realizing that it was his first time being so close to her. He could already feel that she was harder to predict than Charlotte Garcia. Her expression revealed nothing, and her actions were impossible to foresee. She must have suffered so much in this industry, he mused. That's why she's so cautious. She was exceptionally quiet, as if she stood alone in the world. However, Lucas knew that the first rule for someone with a high EQ was to have control over their emotions. Emma had undoubtedly mastered this feat. A while later, there was a huge uproar of chatter and screams. Eric had just entered and he naturally drew the attention of every woman in the hall. He was indifferent to the crowd surrounding him as he walked straight to his seat. It wasn't until he passed by Emma that he slowed down and brushed the back of his hand against hers. She allowed him to do this without making a sound, avoiding eye contact. Her heart began to race. She immediately laughed at how silly she was being. This was her husband. All he'd done was make the slightest bit of physical contact with her, and she felt like she just won a massive prize. She felt like she was floating in the clouds. After all, there were so many eyes on him, but his attention was solely on her. Eric sat down, and Charlotte turned her head to glance at him, which he immediately noticed. To hide her alarm, she quickly patted Emma on the arm and pretended to greet her. Lucas, who was sitting between the two women, fell into a panic upon seeing Charlotte's reaction. This is why a person definitely shouldn't lie, he thought. He'll be tormented by a guilty conscience. Emma turned to look back at Charlotte as a smile spread across her face. Miss Garcia, how are you? I noticed you last time at the award ceremony. It's a shame we weren't fated to work together. I feel sad about it, but I still wish you all the best, Charlotte replied. After hearing her words, Emma felt lost and puzzled. Just as she was about to question her, Lucas interrupted them. Miss Garcia, let's chat later. The event's about to start. Emma lifted her head to look at the man who spoke. She didn't know why she felt like he was trying to hide something. A moment later, she remembered the anonymous warning she'd received from someone at H-World. His way of talking was very similar, and it seemed that, at the moment, he was trying really hard to conceal something. Whether he was a rival or a friend was yet to be determined. Emma decided not to explain herself to Charlotte. Instead, a gentle smile appeared on her face as she turned to look at the stage. The host had already started presenting. Lucas breathed a sigh of relief. If Emma revealed on the spot that she had never received an offer from H-World, it would be really hard for him to explain himself. He had to think of a way to pull her aside. Not long later, the charity auction began. Emma watched as Eric continuously raised his amount. 
She understood that, with his position in the entertainment industry, he had a mission and a reputation to uphold. Lucas continued to focus on Emma. He really wanted to know what she was thinking. No matter what it was, it was important for him to pull her away in case the situation got out of control. He pretended that his hand slipped as he spilled a glass of water all over her white dress. She felt an immediate shocking sensation as she was soaked by the ice-cold water. To make matters worse, her chiffon dress became slightly transparent when wet. It didn't make her feel very glamorous. Sorry, Miss Miller, I've soaked your dress. Lucas instantly apologized. Emma knew that he'd done it on purpose, but as usual, she remained calm as she shook her head. It's okay. However, it was October, and not only was she not wearing much, but her clothes were now drenched. She couldn't help but start to shiver as she instinctively rubbed her arms up and down. At that moment, the pianist to her left gently leaned her forward and placed a black suit jacket around her shoulders. Upon seeing this, Emma immediately glanced over at Eric. She realized that he was only wearing a white shirt, and his jacket was currently in the hands of the pianist. He hadn't handed it to her himself to avoid suspicion. However, she felt extremely warm after receiving the jacket. Envious looks surrounded her. That was Eric Roberts' jacket, and many people wanted to simply touch it, but didn't have the opportunity. Yet, it was in Emma's arms. Only her husband knew how to lovingly care for her. She wrapped herself tightly in the jacket as it draped over her legs and quickly sent a message to Lisa, who was waiting outside, and asked her to buy a new dress to change into. Lucas watched as Emma covered herself with Eric's jacket, frustrated by the turn of events. He would actually wanted to give her his own jacket. However, at the same time, he really wanted to force her into leaving. Luckily, following the incident, Emma did not speak to Charlotte Garcia at all. He exhaled a sigh of relief, but he was also slightly disappointed in Emma. She wasn't the type of person to waste such an opportunity. Not long later, the charity event reached its end. While Charlotte went to the bathroom, Emma finally got the chance to speak to Lucas as she turned to face him. Do you really think that by stopping me this time, you'll be able to stop me for the rest of my life? Lucas was stunned for a moment. He hadn't expected her to be so blunt. I believe you're different than Ariadne Clark Sanders. He remained silent for a few seconds before deciding to respond honestly. Miss Garcia had previously instructed me to contact you. She wanted to sign you on, but I didn't follow her instructions. What I did tonight wasn't because I was afraid the truth would come out, but because I didn't want to be humiliated at such an occasion. I don't want to explain why I did this, but even if I hadn't, someone else would have. You've been standing in too many people's way. Episode 110, Holding a Grudge. Did you also reject my portfolio? Emma felt angry inside, but her expression remained calm. I'm not in the same boat as Ariadne Clark Sanders, but I am aware of this issue. Your age does not meet the necessary criteria, so you were rejected. This is in line with the company's regulations, Lucas responded, trying his best to speak gently. Emma, you've already left Global Pictures, which means you'll be joining a far more competitive agency. If you want a better team, you're not the only one. I don't think I've done anything wrong. However, I am absolutely looking forward to seeing you fight back. This is the entertainment industry. Your position determines your outcome. After hearing his words, Emma smiled in response, which puzzled him. On the surface, you don't appear to be in the same boat as Ariadne, she said. However, in truth... Didn't you sacrifice my opportunity to join H-World for your own benefit? Of course, you don't need to apologize, but I don't think you should be speaking about this incident so proudly. Ariadne likes to stand against people on the sly, 
but she understands her position. As for you, you're the type of person who stabs multiple innocent people in the back. Yet your rationale is you've allowed them to go to heaven sooner. You think they should be thanking you for carrying out God's work. You don't believe you've done anything wrong. Lucas wanted to retaliate, but the words clung to the edge of his lips. He realized that he lacked the power to say them. You'd better continue to block my way, she concluded. As I'm sure you must have heard, I hold grudges. Lucas was dumbfounded. He fell completely speechless. He quickly realized that by stopping Emma, he may not have simply just made a bad decision, but she was also the type of person to refuse to give someone like him a chance to turn back. Therefore, he had no choice but to continue to cooperate with Ariadne Clark Sanders. After taking a few moments to calm himself down, Lucas stopped speaking with her. A while later, the huge hall emptied out. However, Eric remained in his seat. He wasn't a fan of crowds, so it was normal for him to be the last to leave. As for Emma, it wasn't convenient for her to stand up because of her ruined dress. Therefore, no one suspected their relationship at all, except for Father Five. After Charlotte Garcia came back from the bathroom, Lucas went to the parking lot to retrieve his car. Father Five stood beside her. Although they weren't well acquainted, they still chatted occasionally. Father Five, congratulations on signing Emma. He swung his head to face her and held back a smile. Emma did not sign with me. Charlotte was surprised for a moment. Her expression looked lost, similar to how Emma had appeared earlier on. Father Five continued to speak. As if a model like Emma Miller would give my small company a second look. She's rejected us three times already. Charlotte promptly recalled how Lucas had clearly told her that Emma had rejected their offer and agreed to sign with Creative Century. I'll be leaving now. Seeing her puzzled expression, Father Five did not continue speaking. As soon as his assistant arrived with his car, he hastily got inside. Not long later, Lucas also arrived with the car. Charlotte opened the door and stepped inside. Her expression was extremely somber, but he did not notice. Lucas, she said, I want you to contact Emma again and do everything you can to have her join our agency. But Miss Garcia, she already decided to sign with Creative Century. Charlotte glanced at him through the rearview mirror without saying a word. A disappointed expression crossed her face. She was aware of all the scheming Ariadne Clark Sanders had been doing behind her back, so she had originally placed all her faith in Lucas. However, she never expected that her right-hand man would be better at lying to her than Ariadne was. The entire hall was now empty. Only Eric and Emma, as well as a few cleaners, remained. Eric lifted his head to look at his wife. Without a word, he stood up, approached her, and wrapped her tightly in his suit jacket. A warm feeling swept over her as she felt herself calm down. They left the hall one after the other. It wasn't until she got inside the car that she finally asked Lisa for her clothes. What happened? Lisa asked, staring at Emma's soaked dress. A few moments later... Eric stepped into the car from a more secluded spot and sent Lisa toward Luke's car. He noticed Emma was still wearing her ruined dress. Why haven't you changed yet? There were too many people on the street, she said. I was worried that someone would take a picture of me. At a time like this, and you're still worried about getting your photo taken? Eric closed the car window and lifted his jacket up to cover her. Quickly, get changed. Under his cover, Emma stripped out of her long dress and into fresh new clothes, though her body was still freezing cold. Eric reached out a hand to rub her body for warmth. Why didn't you speak to Charlotte Garcia? Because I found out that, as well as Ariadne Clark Sanders, there's one more person standing in my way. 
I'm guessing that his relationship with Ariadne isn't that simple. If I'd rush things, I'm afraid this man may have done something to stop me. So I decided not to make a move in front of him. Emma explained in a concerned tone. His name is Lucas Perez. If we judge him based only on his performance as a manager, he is indeed capable. And he's also Charlotte Garcia's right-hand man. Eric explained as he stopped rubbing her body and instead wrapped her in his arms. I'll not let him get away with bullying you. Emma agreed with a soft hum in response. She was exhausted, thinking about how she had water poured all over her and how Eric was the only one to hand her his jacket. She knew that he was the only person in the world who she could trust and rely on. He was the only one that had given her warmth and kindness under those circumstances. Darling, I'm sorry, she said. I wasted such a great opportunity. If I knew you'd have to suffer like this, I wouldn't have made you come, he replied. Emma smiled as she tried to find a more comfortable spot on Eric's body to rest her head. Meanwhile, Charlotte Garcia had just returned home. She gave her secretary a call. Help me find Emma Miller's contact details. Five minutes later, her secretary called back. Miss Garcia, I just found Emma's portfolio on one of our HR staff's computers. She wanted to come in for an audition, but it seems that Ariadne rejected her. The reason she gave was that her age did not comply with the agency's selection criteria. A loud bang echoed through the room as Charlotte slammed her hands forcefully on the table. She was furious. Those two have completely broken the rules, she thought. How dare they work together and lie to me? To her secretary, she said, Don't let Ariadne Clark Sanders or Lucas Perez know that I found out about Emma's portfolio. Understand? Yes, miss. Send me over Emma's contact details, she ordered. This explains why Lucas insisted that I swap seats with him tonight and why Emma looked completely lost when I congratulated her, she realized. It's time to teach those two a lesson. How dare they treat me like I don't exist? That night, Charlotte made a personal phone call. Hello, Emma. I'm the CEO of H-World. I have a proposition that I wonder if you might be interested in. Episode 111 it will be a good show. Charlotte Garcia personally made a phone call to offer Emma a contract with H-World Entertainment. Although Emma was trying her best to remain calm, she was still a bit surprised. Miss Garcia, she started, but Charlotte interrupted her. Emma, I'm so sorry. The truth is, right after you canceled your contract with Global Pictures, it was my intention to sign you on but I was told you were signing with Creative Century, so I didn't pursue it. However, I had a little chat with Father Five tonight. He told me you had no intention of signing with Creative Century. In that case, are you willing to sign with H-World? Before Emma could respond, Charlotte smiled and continued her efforts to prevent Emma from rejecting her offer. I've already taken a look at your portfolio. My staff didn't handle things properly. I hope they didn't upset you. It seemed that Charlotte was aware that Ariadne had been scheming behind her back. Thank you, Mrs. Garcia, for your appreciation, said Emma. Charlotte was relieved. Let's meet tomorrow for lunch. Emma agreed. After she hung up the phone, she felt as though she was dreaming. Charlotte must have told Lucas to contact me, but he didn't, she guessed, as she thought about how guilty he'd seemed. Including what happened to her portfolio, she'd been prevented from joining H-World twice. It seemed that Father Five had unintentionally given her a helping hand. Lucas and Ariadne's fates don't look very promising now, Emma thought. Overcoming the challenges of being a woman in the industry... Charlotte had proven her ability by making H-World a successful business. She still had plenty of power at her disposal. 
How dare they treat her like a fool, going behind her back and disregarding her position? Did something good happen? Eric had just stepped out of the bathroom, and Emma approached him and pressed her warm body against his. He leaned over and placed his head on her shoulder. I've been given the opportunity to sign with H-World. Emma turned around and wrapped her arms around Eric's neck. Charlotte called me personally. Apparently, she doesn't want Lucas and Ariadne to know about this. Emma explained the entire incident from the start. Eric could relate to how Charlotte felt. It didn't matter to him if his staff did unreasonable things or things to benefit themselves. However, if he found out or witnessed these things himself, he would have dealt with their actions seriously, regardless of their position. After you join H-World, Charlotte will definitely appoint a manager for you, he told her. When that time comes, will you tell them about our relationship? I'll have to see if that person is worth it. Emma's gaze deepened as she spoke. If I get a new management team, you won't have to work so hard anymore. I don't want the same thing to happen to you that happened a few days ago when you didn't tell me about your fever. Eric gently played with Emma's hair as he kissed her forehead. That was just a misunderstanding. Even if you do get a new management team, I'll still review all your paperwork. Not everyone is like me. How so? she asked. Not everyone wants the best for you like I do, he said devotedly. Emma smiled as she stood up on her tiptoes and placed a kiss on Eric's lips. He took advantage of this opportunity to wrap his arms around her waist, increasing the passion between them. He then whispered in her ear, The truth is, I don't actually want to let you go. Once you're at H-World, we'll see less of each other. She hooked her arms around his neck as her cheeks flushed red. Mr. Roberts, do I sense a trace of fear? His words were not unreasonable. Once Emma signed with H-World, she'd have less free time. More people are going to be watching me now, she realized, and I'm going to lose some of my freedom. Emma didn't respond to his fear or make any promises, though. No matter how high she advanced in her career, she'd never forget the one thing that motivated her, being on the same level as Eric. If I neglect Eric because I'm too busy, won't everything I've done so far be pointless? Above all others, Eric was the most important person to her. No matter what the future held or how things changed, she'd made a promise to herself when it came to Eric. She'd treat everything, whether big or small, with great importance. Noticing Emma didn't respond to his fears, Eric bent over and lifted her into his arms. He walked her over to the bed and said, I need a sense of security, honey. What can I do to reassure you? Emma gently lifted her brows. He looked at her with deep conviction and answered, I need to be with you completely. Truthfully, Emma also felt a bit uneasy inside. Though joining a big company was exciting, she knew there would be challenges ahead and she would have to face Lucas and Ariadne on a regular basis. By early the next morning, Ariadne had already started organizing the model auditions for those who had shown up. As Charlotte was leaving the building, she approached the busy Ariadne and said, As planned, we'll be signing five new models, but you only need to find four. Leave one spot open. I've already made other arrangements. Ariadne stared back at her blankly before nodding her head. Yes, Miss Garcia? Charlotte patted her on the shoulder, encouraging her to keep working. Her eyes contained a sense of sarcasm and mockery, but Ariadne had already turned away, so she didn't notice. She was completely unaware that Charlotte was on her way to offer a contract to the one person she'd worked so hard to keep away. Since Charlotte's authority as CEO had been undermined, she was definitely going to find a way to teach Lucas and Ariadne a lesson. If I choose a model to sign, she thought, how dare they stand in my way? 
she decided to let them audition other models so that they would think she'd actually given up on Emma. But as soon as Emma signed the contract, she'd officially announce it and destroy the couple's arrogance. By 10 that morning, the sun was a lot harsher than it had been earlier that day, with drafts of cold, refreshing air. Emma and Charlotte both arrived on time for their meeting. They got along extremely well. They talked for hours, continuing through the entire afternoon. Emma was three years younger than Charlotte. She'd previously seen Charlotte on the runway, where she was quite famous in the modeling industry. No one would have expected that one day she'd end up working behind the scenes instead. Emma, in a couple days, my friend will be holding a show, said Charlotte. I want you to do the opening. You've rested long enough, but don't let anyone know about our contract just yet. I want to prepare a grand signing ceremony for you, and it'll be a good show. Emma nodded and said, okay. Episode 112, Why the Rush? Emma had no idea what Charlotte was planning, but she guessed it had something to do with Ariadne and Lucas. After everything's official, Charlotte continued, I'll arrange for you to have the best manager. Don't worry. Emma smiled through the entire conversation. She indeed needed a capable manager. However, Charlotte insisted on keeping who she had in mind a secret. She didn't give Emma a name or plan for them to meet right away. Actually, Charlotte had already arranged for Emma to appear in the show. She wanted to confirm Emma's abilities and show everyone how the newcomers Ariadne had chosen couldn't measure up to her. Of course, neither Emma nor Ariadne could know her plan just yet. She'd spent so many years putting her trust in Ariadne and Lucas. As a result, she'd made them too courageous. Since this was the case, she was determined to make them see that, by passing on a model like Emma, they'd thrown away all their good fortune. Ariadne couldn't avoid running into Lucas while she was holding auditions for the newcomers that evening. Just as the workday was about to finish, she finally called him over to have a chat in her office. Thank you for not telling Miss Garcia about the incident with Emma, she said. But Emma knows, said Lucas, and he paused for a moment. He leaned against the office table and continued, After we've stood in her way so many times, she'll definitely come up with a new plan. She's not the type to give up easily. Ariadne thought carefully for a moment before looking seriously at Lucas. As long as we work together, we can keep Emma from joining this company. I can't deal with Mrs. Garcia on my own. I need your help. Can you help me out like you always have? Me? Help you out? And watch as you kick me down? Lucas responded coldly. His tone was filled with resentment. You've obviously forgotten that you've stabbed me in the back before, but it's impossible for me to forget. I would never trust a word you say ever again. Ariadne was stunned by his response. She couldn't form the words that were stuck in her throat. She nodded her head in defeat, adjusted her glasses, and said, Ever since Miss Garcia returned this afternoon, she's been in her office talking on the phone. I heard from her secretary that she wants to bring Richard Collins back. You and I need to combine our abilities to keep that from happening. He stopped being a manager because of what happened all those years ago. But that doesn't mean he's willing to just stand on the sidelines. Even if he does come back, he's useless. Lucas wasn't concerned about Richard Collins at all. He was more interested in the results of that day's auditions. Did you find anyone good today? There were a few, she said. Then get them trained quickly. We need to draw Miss Garcia's attention away from Emma as soon as possible, Lucas said urgently. These two would have never imagined that in reality, Emma had already signed on with Ageworld. And Charlotte had personally offered her the contract. Of course, Charlotte wasn't going to let Emma suffer. She was able to sympathize after being a model herself. So she knew what Emma needed most at her point in this career. 
Because the news of Emma signing with H World hadn't been made public yet, everyone was extremely cautious about who Emma would sign with. However, she kept a low profile. There was no way the paparazzi would be able to sneak in and take photos of her while she lived in Tribeca, so most people wouldn't know about her situation. Meanwhile, Star Age released an announcement. Ariel Lewis was officially joining them, and she would be known by the nickname Mini Emma. This 16-year-old girl had succeeded in winning favor with Star Age and signed a contract with them. In light of this, cheers for Emma increased. Even her substitute had found a new home. People wondered when she would make a move too. Lisa offered her opinion on the news. Ariel Lewis does resemble you on the outside. If it was nighttime, it'd be really hard to tell the two of you apart. What Lisa had casually said made Emma freeze while she watched the interview on TV. If even Lisa found it hard to differentiate between them, she'd be affected as well if something went wrong with Ariel. By the way, Emma, everyone's curious about who you'll sign with, said Lisa. It's too bad we can't announce that you've signed with H-World. I'd love to give Ariadne Clark Sanders and that other guy a shock. Emma squinted her eyes at Lisa as she smiled. It's not that she wasn't going to get revenge. It just wasn't the right time. On TV, Ariel looked extremely childish as she sat on the sofa conducting the interview. Everyone says that you're mini Emma and that you're using her fame to create hype for yourself. Is there anything you want to say to that? The reporter asked. Ariel's manager looked at her reminding her to think before she spoke. But after thinking carefully, she decided to speak honestly. I assume when I get to Emma's age, I'll be more successful than her. Afterwards, some words appeared at the bottom of the screen. Little Emma challenges the original, believes she is better than Emma, and wishes her senior all the best in finding a new home. Lisa became angry when she saw that. But Emma reached out her hand to reassure her, asking, Are you really angered that easily? This, Lisa began. Emma cut her off. She's obviously waiting for us to respond to create hype for herself. Do you want to help her do that? Lisa was surprised and speechless. If a 16-year-old child can say stuff like that, people will simply feel she's inexperienced. But if I spoke that way it would be taken differently. It's more beneficial for me to mind my own business. It wasn't that Emma was fine with what Ariel said, but she considered it proof that she was valued in the industry if someone went to the trouble of using her to create hype. Plus, H-World was bound to make an announcement sooner or later, so why the rush? That night, after Eric returned home from Kaleidoscope, he noticed Emma lying on the sofa, waiting for him. He felt a bit bad as he asked, Why aren't you sleeping in the bedroom? Emma sat up and shook her head. If I get home first, I always want to wait up for you and welcome you home. Tomorrow night I'll be attending a show, so I want to use tomorrow's opportunity to wait up for you tonight. Eric placed Emma's head on his lap so she could sleep more comfortably. It's okay. Tomorrow night, I won't be home early either, he told her. Huh? Emma looked at Eric questioningly. I just so happen to have some spare time, he explained. So I'm going to attend my wife's show. You're saying you'll be there too? Emma was excited. She couldn't wait to see Eric while she worked, even if it was just for a few minutes while she was on stage. Uh-huh. Eric replied gently, and he leaned over to kiss Emma's rosy lips. It seemed that no matter how much he kissed her, it wasn't enough. As long as it's something you want to do, do it. I'll always be there. It's that simple. Episode 113. Let's watch a movie. After hearing Eric's words, Emma smiled warmly. He's right, she thought. It really is that simple. They would always be there for each other. 
They understood what was most important to them, and they were willing to give it their all. Have you eaten? he asked. Emma shook her head. Then I'll ask the maids to prepare dinner for you. You still have to work tomorrow, though, so you need to go to bed early. Eric pulled her up from the sofa. The show's not until tomorrow night, so you don't need to worry about me, Emma responded, nudging Eric towards the bathroom. Go wash up, and I'll cook for you. It won't take long. Eric was powerless when it came to Emma. He didn't want to reject her enthusiasm, but he reminded her, Be careful not to burn yourself. Mr. Roberts, you treat me as if I'm a child. Don't strip me of the joys of being a wife. Eric looked at her helplessly. To the outside world, she appeared to be impenetrable, but to him... She was like a child. Finally, Eric gave in and went into the bathroom to take a shower. After he quickly freshened up, he returned to the dining room to find a plate of delicious noodles waiting for him on the table as Emma pulled out his chair. Eric's heart was filled with happiness. A simple gesture like this was extremely precious. No matter how much power he possessed, it didn't compare to having the person he loved prepare a bowl of noodles for him. You don't like it? She asked, seeing him pause. Eric shook his head as he sat down and then ate to his heart's content. Emma sat beside him, saying, You know, I've never seen you do anything but work. Do you have any hobbies? When I'm not at work, I only have enough time to maybe watch one movie, Eric responded sadly. Well then... After you finish eating, let's watch a movie together, Emma suggested. After all, we can watch it right here in the comfort of our home. Okay, but let me warn you in advance. You may not enjoy the things I like to watch, he said. Why does that matter? she asked. Emma was a fast learner. She was extremely touched by what Eric had said earlier about being there for her. He'd always kept her company. So from now on, she wanted to understand him more. After dinner, they watched a movie together as promised. Eric thought she would have fallen asleep, but instead, she was completely immersed the entire time. They even exchanged their thoughts on the plot throughout the movie. They were both thinking the same thing. This is such a great feeling. In the end, they wanted to be a part of each other's world. The next morning, Emma was still in bed when she received a call from Charlotte. Good morning, Emma. How are you feeling today? Please speak freely, Miss Garcia, Emma said. She didn't like to beat around the bush. Charlotte explained, Tonight, at Royalty Show, I've instructed Ariadne to bring the new models there to watch and learn. You might run into one another. Hearing this, Emma realized Charlotte was giving her the opportunity to satisfy her hatred. Because this would truly be a slap in the face for Ariadne. Emma was silent for a moment before responding. Miss Garcia, I won't cause any trouble unless Miss Sanders loses control of herself. Since I gave you this opportunity, you should make the most of it, Charlotte told her. Charlotte's action stemmed from the fact that she, too, felt angered by Ariadne's scheming behind her back. More importantly, she wanted her to suffer, and there was currently no one in H-World who could make that happen better than Charlotte. By arranging everything for Emma to make her move, she did her a favor and paved the way to teach Ariadne a lesson at the same time. Why not take advantage of this opportunity, Charlotte thought. Emma loathed the feeling of being used by others. She'd already suffered that feeling many times over the years she'd been taken advantage of by Nathan. Miss Garcia, you don't need to worry, she said. I know what to do. Charlotte was satisfied because Emma was smart enough to know when to advance and when to retreat. Inside, she was overjoyed that she'd signed Emma on with H-World. However, Emma was simply focused on doing her best at the royalty show. Hopefully, Ariadne won't go too far, she thought. Later that afternoon, 
Emma instructed Lisa to drive to Kaleidoscope since the show was still hours away. She wanted to personally pick up Eric from work. As they sat in the car waiting, they happened to come across news on the radio regarding Ariel Lewis, so Lisa continued changing stations. Emma, are we just gonna let Ariel Lewis carry on this way? She's using the nickname Minnie Emma too recklessly. Lisa felt the situation was a bit unfair. Minnie Emma isn't the same as Emma. There's an extra word in front of it. Even if she got rid of that word, she would still not be me. Emma didn't appear to be affected by Ariel. But, said Lisa, Lisa, she's only using the Minnie Emma name. She hasn't done anything to me personally. Do you think it's worth causing trouble over a nickname? That's a bit unreasonable. Emma shook her head. I've already said it multiple times. It's not that I won't seek revenge. It's just not the right time. Lisa stuck out her tongue and stopped talking. Although she liked to complain, she wasn't the type to be reckless. She knew Emma had her own plans, but they knew an attack from her enemies was inevitable. As soon as Ariel Lewis made a move, Emma would be ready and definitely would not disappoint. This had been her attitude since her comeback. Once Emma made it inside Kaleidoscope, she called Eric from downstairs and requested, Mr. Roberts, can you return my husband to me? Eric couldn't help but smile as he looked at the time. It's only three o'clock. It's a bit too early to leave work. Didn't we agree to see each other after the show? Yes, but I want to take you to dinner first, she told him. Are you at home? Eric asked. I'm here, downstairs, Emma whispered. Okay then, he said. I'll be down there in five minutes. Emma smiled as she hung up the phone. Seeing her expression, Lisa couldn't help but turn to her and say, Have you noticed you smile a lot more these days? I remember not too long ago that I thought I'd have to face your cold expression for the rest of my life because you were always being bullied by Nathan. At the mention of Nathan's name, Emma was obviously taken aback for a moment. Lisa quickly slapped her own mouth. Sorry for not controlling my mouth. Emma lowered her head like nothing had happened. Not long after, Eric found their car and stepped inside. Why did you come so early? If I didn't, wouldn't you just have eaten the junk at work? She asked. He embraced her and smiled. It's not that bad. Actually, I didn't plan this, she said. The idea just occurred to me, so I came. Eric, does my uncertainty make you uncomfortable sometimes? Eric knew Emma was very careful about their relationship. Don't worry, she assured him. From now on... I'll relax and put my faith in you. Eric gently stroked her shoulders without saying a word. He understood that Emma was always trying to avoid causing unnecessary trouble. But in situations where she could have benefited from his help, she'd chosen to face them on her own. This made him feel like he wasn't needed. As it turned out, she acknowledged this and had specifically come to explain herself. Eric turned away from Emma's view and smiled. Lisa noticed this in the rearview mirror and felt lightheaded. He was so very handsome. <laughs>